And hello. Hello and huimeda. Uh, it's uh, Faye Morgana and I'm back with uh, another lesson of Duolingo. I am uh, back to doing the Russian for Spanish speakers course. I'm on the skill Technologia. Technologia. Uh, there are seven lessons in this skill. So, uh, and I see there's no notes, no, uh, no notas. And it's 0% complete. Empezar. ¿Cuál de estos es lampara? Lampa. Lampa. Let's move. Oh, he just keeps wanting to. Um. ¿Cuál de estos es computadora o ordenador? Com computer. 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 Включите радио, пожалуйста. Remember what I said about um about these consonant clusters? So it's that v, k, k, and the l. So I think she says it with the. Uh, I think the v changes to the f sound. So instead of a v, it's an f. Uh, because of the K being unvoiced afterwards. Включите радио, пожалуйста. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. So this one, okay, we know пожалуйста means uh, por favor in Spanish. Пожалуйста. Please in English. Um, this one's radio is uh, radio in Spanish and radio Radia. in English. Uh, radio. Radio. That's what she says. Radio. Radio. And uh, radio in Spanish, radio in English. Fukuchita. That's I, I could be either turn on, turn off. I don't remember. Fukuchita. Включите радио, пожалуйста. Okay. Включите. Let's see. And uh, they believe that means turn on, right? No. And see and the radio for four. I'm just gonna check this. Encienda la radio por favor. And yeah, normally with Spanish, when you know you can look at the end of a word if it's a, it's probably feminine. But in this case, it's o, and it is feminine instead of masculine. Ahí uh, means there. I don't see the Russian for that. Va means um, go. Uh, casa is home, house. I don't see uh, the Russian word is dom, i.e., um, there is uh, tam, va is, go, is like iti, iti. There's a couple of different ways to say go in Russian, I don't, but I don't see the one. Roha means red. Uh, I don't remember the Russian word for red, but it's not here. Включите радио, пожалуйста. So, enciende la radio, por favor. I think that means turn on the radio, please. I just don't remember what encienda means. What does encienda means again? I think it means turn on. Yeah. Включите радио. Радио. Включите радио, She doesn't say radio. Радио. Включите радио, пожалуйста. She says radio there, and then she says radio here. Радио. Включите радио, пожалуйста. Включите радио, пожалуйста. Uh, tren is, uh, oh, okay, ¿Cuál de estos es tren? If you remember from Spanish, tren means train, and this looks like a train. I think the Russian is, let's hear her. Poest. Poest. I don't know where they get that word from. Okay, that's right. Uh, let me type this in Russian. I wonder what the etymology of that word is, actually. Uh, po est. Uh, west. The next one, let's try this. Switch back to my English keyboard. I am 
case you may have noticed that my screen is a little different. I'm back on my Linux machine for the language stuff because uh, I actually prefer Linux's keyboarding for studying all the languages. I mean, if you're not into Linux, Linux is kind of like, you have to be willing to tinker around with your computer if you're going to use Linux. I mean, um, I use Debian Linux, so I tinker around with it probably more than an Ubuntu user. But I mean, if you want to switch from Windows to Linux, go, uh, Ubuntu is an easy way to switch to. Um, but you kind of learn as you go. So Russian. Поезд. 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 Okay. Oh, it used to mean caravan or convoy processions. I guess I could see that because with trains you have multiple train cars linked together. Um, so I guess they just had this word for caravan, meaning caravan originally, and then they saw a train and just said, oh, okay, well, it's just like that. Uh, Apparently, a method of fishing in which a fishing net is pulled by two side-by-side -side boats. Okay, that's interesting. Declensions. So that's a nominative form. Uh, genitive. Genitive. Dative. Accusative. Doesn't change. Instrumental and propositional. Interesting etymology. Cognates include, okay, Polish, because it's Slavic, or, yeah. There's no real etymology, it must be just, it's just a Russian word then. Uh, I don't know how to speak Polish, so, so they don't have anything else under etymology besides that. It's a cognate with the Polish word. Interesting. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже идет в этом. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. My brother also goes by this. My okay. Um, me hermano. Мой брат is uh, me hermano. My brother тоже means also. Um, uh, también. I'll sw I might have to switch the syntax, the word order around. You get vetum queste. Okay, so this would mean goes, literally goes with this train, but the drugum, but his, but drugum, I don't, vaganya, I don't, vaganya. It's here, this whole thing. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. I don't know what this word means. Hey. Oh, you're giving me the whole thing. Durugum means... Ah, okay. But in another... Why? Uh, in another car, I guess. In otro lado. So I guess Bagania means they're not giving me a hover over here. That's not nice. So I'm just gonna see this. Um, yeah, another car. That was my guess. And Spanish. Okay. Oh, car <laughs> Ocado. Oh, Caro. Okay, but they're giving me Vagon here. So, mi hermano también, this means go, también va, yeah, in este tren, pero, okay, let's try this. I, I want to say pero in otro vagón, but Pero también va en este tren, pero en otro. Mi hermano, hermano, 
sorry, mi hermano um, también va en este tren pero in otro hang on habitacion doesn't fit here it's like a room or uh, yeah it's like it's just like means room um what would be the russian word um quarter quarter i can't remember exactly skantes is following moscow's night lamparas means lamp lampa in russian moskva skantes um in english that means following Or next. Mi hermano también va en este tren, pero en otro vagón. Okay, I think that's right. Yay. Felicitaciones, estás trabajando duro y aprendiendo nuevas palabras. Okay, congratulations, you've worked. Uh, you are working hard and learning new words. Idite pa lesnitsu na vtaro etash. Idite pa... Okay, idite means go. And that would be the uh, formal way to say go. Uh, I don't know what this word means. Okay, let's hear everything. Idite pa lesnitsu na vtaro etash. Idite pa lesnitsu na vtaro etash. Not sure. Lesnitsy. No, that's not Lesnitsy. nice. Po lesnitsy. Na. Vtaroy. Vtaroy means a segundo, second. Etage. Yeah, that, that's floor. Um, etage. That, that actually comes from French. Etage. Etage. That comes from the French. Um, uh, etage. Uh, meaning floor. Etage. So you see the Spanish word is piso. Okay, so the na... Vtaroi. Vtaroi. Na vtaroi, etage. Uh, el segundo piso means on the second floor. But they're not going to use this word. Lesnice. Lesnice. That's not nice. Idite po lesnice. Na. Idite po... Okay, let's just use this then. Just because it's... it's Idite. Or something. Vtaroi. Oh. Segundo piso. But what is coming after por? Ah, <sighs> vaya por. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's escaladas or. I think it's this one, but it could be Gustoso. I don't know what that is. Tango. It could be for. Yeah, go by the escalators to the second floor. Anyways, that's not very nice. Por las escaleras. I'm going to type that in because I think that's what it is. Escaleras. Por la escaleras. Por las escaleras. Lesnice. Lesnice. Okay, that's not very nice. They didn't give me a helper over for that. That's obviously a new one. Uh, yeah, oh, escaleras. The stairs. Oh, I forget how to say escalator in Spanish. Lesnice. Uh, I think I learned that in the English the Russian for English course, I just don't remember. Lesnice. 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 Okay, it's isn't. Idite pa lesnice na vtaroi etash. Idite pa lesnice na vtaroi etash. Vaya por la escaleras al segundo piso. So obviously it's not refrigerator. Um, yay. I'm gonna just see if anyone's complaining about that and just tell them that their hover over tip is missing um mm -hmm. 
know if that's actually right, but whatever. He's suggesting this is a correct answer in Sp for the Spanish translation. I'm not sure about that. Okay, I'm gonna just say that they're missing their hover over. Um, yeah, this one. No apparesen. They, they're not there. <laughs> They're not wrong, they're just, some of them are not there. Okay, send. Yeah. Oh, they are. Send. Next. Continue. Hey, what's going on? Continue. My brother also rides in this train, but in the other wagon. My brother also rides in this train, but in the other wagon. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. That's a mouthful of Russian, and I'm worried they're going to tell me I'm wrong. Should I just risk it once, or what? Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в друг... No, they're not going to... They're going to cut me off, I think. Try once. If I get it wrong, I'll just start over and not do the speech thing. Because Duo, Duo has a tendency to, to not, like, when I do the speech thing, I don't know if it's my microphone or if I'm speaking too soon or too late. So I'll try this once. Um, Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но, но, но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Oh, yeah, she gave that one to me. <laughs> Could it be my Windows machine? Because I'm now on Linux. Где лестница на третий этаж? Okay, лестница, we learned, means stairs in English. Uh, las escaleras. Escalera, escaleras. And uh, tritti etage. Um, где means where. So let's do this in Spanish. Donde? Uh, is the uh, stand less escaleras? Um, nah, is not on? Nah. Oh, for the third floor. Okay. Где лестница на третий этаж? Okay, so yeah. Uh, where? Are the stairs to, to the third floor? No. Третий этаж. Donde está? Okay, I'm gonna check this. Donde? Okay, before they wanted las escaleras, now they just want one. Este, Rusia, Vagones, and Pedro don't fit in this sentence. Uh, okay, now they want just this. Donde, donde esta la escalera? Donde esta la escalera? Escalera al terzo piso. So I think this means where's the stairs for the third floor? Where's the stairs to the third floor? Yes, literally, al terzo piso is to the third floor. But in English, you could say, where Where are the stairs for the third floor? <laughs> Где лестница на третий этаж? You can say for the third floor because you're going from one floor to the next floor and you want the stairs to go from one place to another and it's t taking you is giving you the third floor, so 
floor is. That's my explanation for why you can say for the third floor in English. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Кошка любит спать. Okay, кошка is a uh, al- alagata. Любит means um love. So the cat loves любит a uh, ama. Uh, spat is sleep or lamp. <laughs> on the lamp, by the lamp, because it is something, it is probably warm there. Тепло. Yeah. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Okay. Uh, la gata любит ama. Любит. Uh, they want me to say the gusta. I want to say quiere, but that means also means to want. So maybe a la gata um, le gusta dormir. Okay, uh, it's either by the lamp or on the lamp. Lampe. B- below the lamp. Debajo de la lamp. Oops, lampara. Por qué? Okay. Por qué? Remember, it's not two separate words when you mean because. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Что? Там. Тепло. Okay. Let's check this though. A la gata le gusta dormir debajo de la lampara porque hace calor ahí. Uh, then say that means 20. Um, I can't remember the Russian number. Um, I can't remember the Russian number. That's it. Maybe it's twenty. Por um. That's how the gusto tomar. Koshka, lubit, spat, pot, lampe, pot, lampe. This is sometimes means for in English, and let's see uh, a use of it here. Sto, we have porque. Uh, computadoras isn't here. Incendian, uh, no. Okay, a la gata le gusta dormir debajo de la lampara porque hace calor ahí. Okay, there we go. Yay! Let's see what they're saying. The other correct solution, otra solución correcta, the other correct solution is a la gata le gusta dormir debajo de la lampara porque ahí hace calor. So you can say ahí hace calor. I was going to and I just wasn't sure. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Включите компьютер в начале um, урока. Is like lesson. Начале. Um, so this would be um, turn on the computer and see and da la com la computadora I can't remember how to spell it включите компьютер в начале урока включите they want the plural for some reason this is plural компьютеры oh yeah las com компьютеры yeah computadoras um Начали. А. А принципио. Урока. Это а. Принципио. Начали. Да. Урока. Релаксио. Начали. Урока. Окей, okay, so. Включите. 
включите компьютер в начале урока. Encienden las computadoras. Oh, wait. Comienzo. Nachale. Do la lección. Okay, they want el comienzo, beginning. Nachale. But they're giving me el principio. Este means um, this. We don't see eta or some form of eta. Uh, segundo means second. Uh, Nachale. And lampras is uh, lampa in Russian. We just learned and that means e. Um, Включите компьютер в начале урока. I'm going to try this. And that's kind of not nice because they have the hover over so they told me that was wrong, but it should be right. I think I will report it because But when you can, please, they'll appreciate it. Yeah. Use your head. But he should use the report button. I know it takes time. Yeah. I guess because he's tried a ton of the different responses that you can use for this one. And he's right. Ordenadores is computers as well. Um, so dead. Uh... I think that's a, in some places in Latin America, they might use that form. Uh, basically, he's saying, please um, add in the various Spanish translations for s some of these words, right? Uroca and computer. Um, because you can say ordenadores or capitadores or uh, lección, clase. Uh, see, he has it. Lecciones, clases, tareas. Uh, yeah, anyways. But I will report that they didn't Nachale. accept this one and it's not right. Um, there's two things. Uh, I think that should be accepted. And is, it's not wrong. They're just not showing the, both of them. So I'm just going to send that, and we will restart, because that was mean. The thing is with Duolingo, you have to keep in mind that it's run by volunteers and, and people contribute to the courses, um, and, then, um, and then they usually put the course in beta, beta mode um, until most of it, I don't know, I guess it's passed. This has passed beta, though. But I guess they still haven't put in some of the suggested sentences that he, that the Duolingo users have inputted. Let's try this again. Empezar. Lampara. Lampa. Lampara. Qual de estos es lampara? Lampa. Lampa. Qual de estos es tren? Pues. Pues. Следующие три поезда едут на север. Следующие три. Три is three. Uh, поезда is some form of train. That's the plural for train. Поезда. Три. Yeah. Поезда. Is... Следующие три поезда едут на север. Okay, what's this one? Следующие. Sequences three. Sequences. Следующие. Sequences. Three. Поезда едут на 
Север. Сер. Сера. Сер. Сера. Север. Следующие три поезда едут на север. 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 А север. Окей. Okay. Следующее. Три. Следующее. Um, I think this means um. Три. Los a uh, tres gentes trenes. Следующее. Едут. Van. Asia El Norte. That's what I think it is. In Spanish. Едут. Okay. I had a difficult time. Um, no. Um, los. Maybe it is Los Seguintes. Tres. Trenes. The following three trains. I. I'm trying to think which way. Uh, uh, Man, Asia, El Norte. Los Seguintes, Tres Trenes. That means third. How many? Skolpastoit, Tren. But this is the plural. Puest. This is Puest at Trenes. Lampara, Lampa, Tercer, um, not in there. Um, Tercer. Okay, I don't think those are in there. Los Seguintes. So do we say Los Seguintes Tres Trenes? Or do we say Los Tres Seguintes Trenes? But I'm going to try this. <sighs> El Norte. No! Yes, no! That was bad. I misread it. I thought it said El Norte. <laughs> okay, this person there, the three train spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, but maybe the Russian wouldn't say it this way. The, the word um, when you put this word here in Spanish that might not be an adjective form for here anymore for train anymore so it might be different um, this is the I, I think this is the adjective form this is adjective adjective of train and when you put this after this maybe it's not an adjective anymore so maybe they don't accept it but they should just report I, people need to learn how to use the repertoire. Um, I will restart that. That was that was bad, bad mistake. Echtom, echtom von my, very stupid of me. West. Computadora, computer. 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 Ты купил новый холодильник. Включи его. Um, so T could be um, you bought Novi is new. Ты купил новый холодильник. Включи его. Холодильник. Холодильник. Oh, it's a refrigerator. Yeah. Холодни means cold. Холодильник. So refrigerator. Refrigerator. Um, so I think this means in English, did you buy a new refrigerator? Um, uh, I think that means turn it on. So, um, let's do Spanish. Um, uh, did you buy, buy, buy past tense? Um, compraste? Compraste? Un nuevo refrigerador. Um, in lo encienda, lo encienda. Turn it on. Did you buy a new refrigerator? 
turn it on, let's see. Um, Enciendo, uh, yeah, Encien. Encien, where's the accent? Enciendelo, Encien, Encien, Enciendelo. Enciendelo, okay. Contraste, okay, so, um, oh, they want this past tense, sorry. Has comprado, has comprado un nuevo refrigerador, um, vagones nahe norte, no. Costasa, I don't remember what costasa means. Ultimo is like last, uh, um, enciendelo. As comprando, as comprando, as comprando, comprado, comprado, as comprado, comprado. Okay, that's what they want. But I forget what this word means. Costasa, I don't believe that fits here, but I'm just going to quickly look that up so I remember. <laughs> Oh, I spelled it wrong. Costosa. Is that like things? No, costosa. Is it? Costosa. No, that's Italian. <laughs> it probably means the same, but expensive, costly. Costosa. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Lampara, lampara. Idite po lesnice na второй etaž. Lesnice. Um, vaya. So it's formal. Um, por la escalera al tier. Идите по лестнице на второй этаж. На второй этаж. Идите по лестнице на второй этаж. Идите по лестнице. Идите по лестнице на второй этаж. 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 Второй. No, segundo. 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 Piso. Vaya por la escalera al segundo piso. Vaya por... No, now they want the plural. Why do they want the plural here? Lesnice. Por. Vamos is the... Uh, we go. Este is this. Me is obviously me. Or the reflexive. Um, computadoras is computers. Vaya por la escalera. So they want plural again. Yeah, one of them they want plural, the other one they wanted the singular. I don't think there's a difference. Uh, el segundo piso. Okay, that's correct. But I, just to clarify, I don't think there's a difference between the plural and the singular stairs. Right? Las Escaleras, the step. <laughs> I'll just have escalera, right? Use the stairs. Escaleras, the stairs. I don't know which one's more correct. I mean, the, um, well, uh, Academia Espanol um, might elicit some information. Um, dictionary and I just wonder sometimes if they have like for Dutch there's a Dutch site that I found that um, if you have questions over usage of words and why one thing is used over another or 
or what the correct spelling of words are. There's a really good Dutch site for that that I use for the Dutch. I'm not sure if they do that here. No, they're just saying escalera. I typed in escaleras and they put in escalera. Um, las escaleras are la escalera. There it is. Uh, is the Spanish dictionary one? Eh. Okay, let's see. Um, what does it say? Quite sure. I'll have to read this later to so figure out which one they like. The picky things I can't let go. I thought that escalera is stairs, staircase. However, I'm saying it used the plural is one form. Am I wrong to use escalera uh, to mean stairs? Good point here. Okay, escalera is usually a ladder. Escaleras refers to a set of stairs, but I've heard people say, no tomas el ascensor, vete por la escalera. Hey, don't take, don't take the, uh, yeah, that's it, elevator, ascensor. Uh, go, go by the, take the stairs, go by the stairs. No tomas, toma las escaleras. Interesting. This one almost feels Latin American. This feels like um, Castellana. Is Castellano? Is what they say in Spanish for uh, mainland Spanish. Castellano. Yeah, Castellano. Um, is indeed the Spanish word for Spanish. So you'll see Spanish language here. Uh, or you can say Castilian, but the Spanish will say Castellano. Castellano. Castellano is the actual Spanish word for Spanish. Um, in English, you can say Castilian. Uh, uh, Iberian Peninsula. So that's what you would say for uh, Castellano, mainland Spanish. Um, so I think this one is more mainland Spanish. I think this one's more Latin American, but I'm not sure. I'm guessing. Okay, that answers my question. Сколько лестниц в этом доме? Сколько лестниц в этом доме? So how many stairs are in this home? How this house? Um, quantos? What? Quantos? Сколько? Quantas, yeah, should be feminine. Quantas escaleras. So we do want the plural this Lesnitz. time. Сколько лестниц в этом доме? Because whether or not you're talking about one set of stairs or multiple set of stairs, you do want escaleras this time. Сколько лестниц? Этом. The этом дом. Um, quantas escaleras? I. Этом. In este, Dome. we want to say esta casa, I guess. 
uh, so Qantas Escaras I in esta casa this is the masculine form of esta hermano means brother domir sleep dos too uh, we don't see the russian words for that for those words okay quantas escaleras hay en esta casa this is escaleras hay en esta casa yay следующие три поезда едут на север oh uh, yeah i think i got this one wrong because um yeah, because I put El Norte. Um, Los. I'm trying to think what order I put it in. Los. Siguientes tres trenes. Van hacia El Norte. So, Siguientes. Three. Tres poezda. Trenes. Yedo. Na. Sever. Hacia el norte. Okay. Enciende. Means to turn on. Sledushe. Sledushe. I don't think that's... Yeah. We don't see the Russian word for that. Mucho. Um, it's a lot. Minoga. Special word. Apetacion. Quatera. Roja means red. So we don't see the Russian words for these Spanish words. Los, okay, so let's try this out. Siguentes tres trenes van hacia el norte. Let's see. Los siguientes tres trenes van hacia el norte. There you go. Let's try this. That is correct. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Mi hermano también va um, va por este tren, pero no uh, oh, pero en it was otro vagón. It's what they wanted. It's what we saw earlier. So, mi hermano también va en este poezde. Muy brat tuje yedet ve tam poezde, no v drugom vagone. Muy brat tuje yedet ve tam poezde, no v no v drugom vagone. Okay, in este tren, in este tren. Oh, so the English is my brother is also going in this on this train, but in another car or wagon. You could say you can say wagon, train, wagon, train, car. Pero uh, Okay, let's double check that. Me, hermano, también va in. Este tren pero en otro banco. Pero no. Ah, uh, también va en este tren pero en otro. En papas. These don't. I don't believe fit in the sentence. También va en este pero en otro banco. Включите радио, пожалуйста. En cien da la radio por. Включите, we learned, means to turn on, encienda. Включите. Yeah. Радио. Включите радио, пожалуйста. She says, включите радио, пожалуйста. And then here she says that, yeah. Радио. Включите радио, пожалуйста. Encienda la radio, por favor. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Мой брат тоже едет в этом поезде, но в другом вагоне. Поезде. He gave it to me. I did better earlier. A 
Asombros. Asombroso. I have never heard that one in Spanish. Asombroso. 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 Ten in a row. В этом поезде двадцать вагонов. In this train, двадцать. Uh, okay, двадцать. I think that means twenty. So I think they're saying here there are twenty wagons in this train. Двадцать. Yeah, this twenty. Vente vagones. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is the train? Poesia. Okay, well, okay, 20. yeah, okay, they want to say this train has. Este, oops, este tren tiene vente vagones. Vagonov. Etem. Este, yeah, because. <laughs> you could say, I, there are 20, you could, I think you can say, I vente vagones in este tren, I think. I think you can say that. I don't know why they don't want to say that. Um, but they want to... Let's see what they want here. I'm just going to do the tapping one. Este tren tiene... Yeah, so they do want that one. Escalera al acción pero. So they do want this one, but I could swear you can say I vente vangonas. There are 20 wagons in this train. Right? Yeah. It's the same either way. I feel like this one is more representative of how the Russians, how the Russian sentence is being formed, because of v, because of v, it means in or on, right? So I think this is more representative of the actual construction that the Russians are using. But they they flip the word order. They don't say they don't say this one first and then they say this one first. But, um, anyways, it's all right. We'll we'll just. Put this in. Где лестница на третий этаж? Oops. Okay. Um. Где лет лестница на третий этаж? Okay. So where are the stairs to the third floor? Где лестница на третий этаж? So donde type donde Esta la escalera um, al tercer piso. ¿De dónde? Lesnice. Escalera. Na. Al tercer piso. Na. Al tercer piso. Okay. So, ¿dónde está la escalera? They're trying to trick you with the poor. No. <laughs> в этом поезде двадцать вагонов. В этом в а uh, а uh, don't think is that right? No, that's not the right E, is it? No. I think that's right. В этом в этом поезде двадцать вагонов. Is В этом поезде двадцать вагонов. 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 Этом поезде. В этом поезде двадцать вагонов. Двадцать. 
в вагонов. В этом поезде 20 вагонов. Вчера он купил две лампы. Вчера он купил ayer. Um, вчера means ayer, uh, yesterday in Spanish. Um, ayer um, he bought Вчера он купил две лампы. Okay, this... Вчера он купил две лампы. Okay. Um, yesterday he bought two lamps. Um, ayer, um, uh, dos lamparas. Вчера он купил. Окей, окей, fine. Yesterday he bought, compro. Uh, fine, I'll compro. Две Dos. лампы. Купил. Лампы. Окей, okay. let's double check this. Ayer. Compro. Dos. Окей, okay, we could just do that one. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Кошка любит спать под под лампой. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Под лампой, потому что там. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Потому что там тепло. Потому потому что там тепло. Там тепло. Там. Тепло. Там тепло. Окей. Ла... А, а... Я. Ла гата... А, но, но, но. А ла гата ле густа дормер. Ам... Вы сэд дебахо де ла лампара. А... Пабли джаст ни порке. I say, oops, color, because it is warm there. Um, the cat likes to sleep under the lamp because it is warm there. A la gata le gusta dormir debajo de, de la lampara porque ahí, oops, Ahí hace calor. Calor. Nuevo means new. Um, novi in Russian. It's not there. Trenes, we learned, is Puezd. Puezdi. Puezda is the plural in Russian for Trenes. Um, apaga, no, I think that turns, means turn off. Escalera means stairs. Okay. Ale ja to legusta to merd baho de la lampara poke ai ase kalor. Koshka lubit spat pod lampe, potomu što tam teplo. Koshka lubit spat pod lampe, potomu potomu što tam teplo. Potomu 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 što tam. Potomu što potomu što. I gotta get you saying it. Potomu što tam teplo. Teplo. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Кошка любит спать под лампой, потому что там тепло. Потому что, потому что, потому что, потому что. Потому. 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 Потому что. Что? Потому что там. Там. Тепло. 
Potunushto tam teplo. Tiplo. Tiplo. Potunu potunushto tam teplo. Okay. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Um, yes. And sienden las computadoras. Uh, I reported this one because they didn't accept my answer. Начале. Um, comienzo de la lección. Because they didn't accept my... Um, Начале. They didn't accept El Principio. This is the one I got wrong earlier. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Включите компьютер в начале... Включите компьютер... Компьютеры. Компьютеры в начале урока. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Включите... Включите компьютер в начале урока. Включите компьютер в начале урока. Урока. Uroka. Uroka. Okay. Incendian. Las computadoras. Incendian. Computer. Computadoras. Nachali. Vea. Oh. Comienzo de la acción. I think that's right. Поезд приближается. Поезд приближается. Uh, the train something. <laughs> приближается. <laughs> is, oh, the train is getting closer. So, cerca means to get closer. It means getting closer. Uh, um, el train se acerca. Поезд. Приближается. Приближается. Пуэс приближается. Пуэс приближается. Пуэс приближается. Прибли. Приближается. Jeez. That's a tongue twister. Прибли. Прибли. Поезд приближается. This is a bit of a tongue twister because п and б are very similar. Um, п is not voice and б is voice. Ri and Li are both glides. They're pretty. Uh, it, some languages don't make a distinction between the R and the L, so. Приближается. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Поезд приближается. Поезд приближается. El tren se acerca. Allí gusta hermana Francia. They don't fit. Okay, so this is correct. Выключи телевизор, пожалуйста. Выключи телевизор, пожалуйста. Um, turn on the television, please. Um, encienda la uh, su televisor, por favor. That's Spanish. Телевизор. Yeah. Выключи. Oh no, выключи. Oh no, 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 no. Apaga. Выключи. It's a different one. Apaga. Oh, jeez. What's the other one again? Those two, uh, those two Russian words are very similar, I think, and it's easy to get them confused. Vikluchi, kluchi. Vikluchi televizor, pajalusta. Apaga la televizor, pavor. Turn off the TV, please. Apaga. Oh, el televizor, por favor. Norte, vente. Norte means north. Sera, vente. Dvatnets, dvat, Mesa is a uh, stall, table, and siende uh, means to turn on, but we don't want that Voy one. Glitchy. We want this one. Apaga. I don't want to get wrong on that. Okay. Yes. Мой папа много работает на компьютере. Papa. Um. A robot, it's not. A robot, it means work. Often works on the computer. No. Works a lot. Minonga means a lot. Mucho. Um, papa, a robot, it means to work. Trabaja. Mucho. Uh, on 
Nah, Dora, maybe. Let's see. Moi. Moi, papa. Papa. Papa, papa. Papa. Mnoge. Mucho. Rabotek. Trabaja. Computer. Rabotek. Uh, uh, no, it's not that one. Na. Oh, no. Computer. Yep. Okay. Mi papa trabaja mucho on, mucho en la computadora. My dad works a lot on the computer. Mi papa trabaja mucho en la computadora. Sobre tarde otro comienzo. You wouldn't say sobre here. I mean, we, could, we say on the computer in English, but that's not what they would think of would use for Spanish or probably even Russian well nah. I guess na is kind of like on in English going from Russian to English you know prepositions don't just directly translate from one language to another you just have to get used to how um, speakers in those languages uh, view like think of things and I think that's the thing about language when you learn a language you're not learning to tra translate from one language to another you're, um, to get good at a language, you have to start thinking like those speakers, the speakers in those languages, which means actually just training your brain to think differently than what you normally think. I mean, um, but some things are kind of fun. I mean, like I, I said before, and I think I said uh, during my stream the other night, falspela, uh, falspela in Dutch means um, to cheat, and it's literally false play. <laughs> or to play falsely, I guess. So false bailer. So if you're a false bailer, you're a cheater in Dutch. Mi papa trabajo. So you, like I said, you just have to get used to how um, speakers in another language think of things. So yeah. Mi papa trabajo trabaja mucho en la computadora. Okay, I think that's correct. Yes, nineteen. This should be the last one. Это последний вагон поезда. Это последний вагон поезда. А последний здесь. Это здесь. Последний, maybe that means last. It's the last. This is the last wagon of the train, maybe. Последний. Yes, is el último. Вагон. El último. Последний вагон. Wagon del train. Поезда. Yeah. Это последний вагон поезда. Yeah, because последний and последний раз means last time. Это последний вагон поезда. Это последний вагон поезда. Es el último вагон del and we don't want the plural. This one's in the singular. Uh, me means uh, my or uh, moi, like moi train, Maya. Dos means two, and nuevo means new. Uh, dos is dva in Russian. Vagones is, uh, I believe, uh, vagoni. I don't remember the plural. I can't think. I'm not sure what the plural is, but it's not the plural form. Nuevo means new in, in Russian. That would be some form of novi. And mi uh, means my in English. In Russian would be um, some form of moi or maya. Es el último vagón de tren. There we go. And we are done. Yay! To continuar, por favor, espera. Espera. Ich bin on her button. Okay, tienes una racha de mil novecientos vente días. Okay, continuar. And lección completada dos, uh, dos, not dos, diez puntos de experiencia. Continuar. Cinco puntos de experiencia. Yay. And so they're only giving me one lingot today. So some of the other ones that gave me four lingots after I completed it and got perfect. Now they're only giving me one. 
Gnaste uno lingot. I really don't know why they give me one lingot for getting per after I do a lesson and I get perfect, they give me one lingot. Sometimes they give me four or five, I've noticed, and it's weird. I don't know why. Or is that related to my streak? Not sure. I'm just going to check. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, so I got 192 lingots. Yes, for a streak of 1920 days. So every, for your, for every 10 day streak you get, you get a lingot. So what, oh, sorry, it's no, it's for every 10 day streak you have, you get a lingot. So I have a streak of 1920 days, so I get a lingot for each 10 days. So 1920 divided by 10 is 192, so I've got 192 lingots. Um, let me just check the store. Uh, yeah, I'm on day one of my double or nothing streak is still there. Oh, streak, my streak saver is still there. Okay. Um, and that is that. Now, let's see. So, um, I noticed the other day that they, um, they added some stuff to the French for English speakers course. I'm trying to decide if I should do some or not. I'll do a tiny little bit. I'll do one lesson. Well, not one lesson, actually. I'll do, uh... I'll try to test out of one of the French skills. It really bugs me though when they put up these Duolingo courses and then they just start throwing more and more content on the courses because um, kind of have to cap it because it gets ridiculous because you know they're just throwing more stuff on because they just want people to stay on the site and stay on. And, but you know there's so many languages on Duolingo they don't need to, um, you know with computers we talk about bloatware so they don't need to put bloatware on the Duolingo courses to keep people on the site. If people really like to learn languages, they'll just keep learning languages and there's lots of languages to learn in Duolingo, so I don't think they have any worries about people not being on the site so they can't generate ad revenue. Anyway, so uh, the other day I noticed that um, they added, they moved some, maybe they just moved some sentences around too and put them in different skills, but anyways I have like some other skills that I need to complete and they're already unlocked because I have finished the tree completely but since they added new skills I lost my golden owl which is really annoying I guess I can try this <laughs> no because I don't think that completes the skills actually mm. I'm gonna try that once let's try that once see how much French I remember I mostly care about my Duolingo owl. He's cute. And not starting. So this is that. <laughs> Did not letting me do it. I don't think you can test out multiple skills anymore. Really in in the uh, on Duolingo. Okay, yes, they are test out of fifteen skills. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, the cake is high. Le gâteau. The cake. Is, okay. Yeah. Le gâteau est en hauteur. Elle est particulièrement riche. Elle est particulièrement. Elle est particulièrement riche. She is particularly rich. She's particularly rich. I'm going to say that because that is what it means to me. <laughs> I can see that movie. That I can. S what? That I can see that movie. Ha. <laughs> Uh, okay, whatever. Translate to the French. Que je puis voir ce film important. Les graines sont petites. Ah, uh, the seeds are small. You can explain the formula. Vous pouvez expliquer la formule. De plus, il est plus facile à réaliser. 
um, plus this kind of like thing. Um, I thought that was the plus. And why does he say plus? De plus, il est plus facile à réaliser. Oh, because of the ill, de plus ill. Um, isn't that like saying... The plus is like saying, um, furthermore... He wouldn't say more easy. Uh, it's going to be wrong. Yeah, it is furthermore. It is easier to accomplish. Oh, yeah, blue facile. I see. I'm rusty. Try again. It's 15. 15 skills. I want to see if I can test out of those 15 new skills because Okay, let's go. The height is equal to the length. La hauteur est égale à la longueur. Elle est particulièrement riche. She's particularly wealthy. I'll, I'll say that this time. These files are not on the hard drive. Sufficient. Nous sommes pas sur le disque de. Dis-moi, es-tu amoureux? Tell me, are you in love? Dis-moi, tu es amoureux. It employs about 100 people. Il emploie environ 100. Person service. No, person. J'aime le chou, surtout le chou rouge. Oh no, j'aime le chou. Red. I think this is red cabbage. I think chou is cabbage. No, you can say I love cabbage. I'm sorry. Oh, we've had this discussion about like and love in the on the French thing. It's it's annoying because you can't. J'aime means I like. Uh, yes. Oh, because they want to say j'adore. Okay, we'll do that over. Yeah, I'm not a native French speaker. I just grew up learning it. J'ai grandi en apprenant le français, mais je ne le parle pas. And that is what I like to say about my French skills nowadays. Which, um basically just translates as I grew up learning French but I don't speak it. It employs about 100 people. Uh, yeah. La petite poule rouge plante des graines. The little I'm going to say little chicken. The little <laughs> red chicken. La petite poule rouge plant, <laughs> plant, plants seeds. What? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, you could say hand, but a chicken is usually whatever. We, we usually think of a chicken as a female, as a hen, anyway. So. The soil can freeze below 5 degrees. Le, le sol peut geler. On dessous de cinq 
segera below 5 degrees, right? 5 degrees, that's about. Dis toujours la vérité. Always tell the truth. Dis toujours la vérité, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to say please for that. Always tell the truth. <laughs> that I can see that movie. Uh, 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 yeah, it's this one. Que je puisse voir ce film est important. Elle aime particulièrement la musique. <sighs> she particularly likes music. Elle aime particulièrement la musique. She particularly likes music. They are relatively big. Ils sont relativement grands. Uh, yeah. They're trying to trick you. You need to know your, your French grammar because all these are the same except for grand. And big here, it should go with this. Il, which is the plural masculine form, masculine plural form, so it should be this one. Uh, particularly grand. Actually, no, wait. Grand. No, 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 no. Grand. Grand. No, th that's the feminine plural form, if I remember. This is just the masculine singular. It's gotta be that one. Les grands esprits se rencontrent. Uh, I'm going to say the great souls meet because esprit to me means a soul and when you put grand in front of a noun it means great, doesn't mean big. Um, so rencontre means to meet. Oh no. Okay, that should be, oh, that's annoying. That should actually be in that skill where we have um, proverbs and sayings. But I prob I might have learned that one before and forgot about it. I wasn't thinking it was some saying or proverb. Try this again. The French is rusty. Don't know everything. It's hard to know everything about a language unless you're like speaking it every day and exposed to it every day. Um, so while I find it's fun to learn different languages, but you know, you kind of keep things realistic and keep your expectations realistic. There's, um, you, it's, you can be fluent in more than one language, but you're always going to have, I think, one language that's stronger or you're more comfortable with. I guess it depends. I mean, some people grow up with three or more languages, um, I, I still suspect that in that case there's still going to be a couple that someone's more comfortable with. I mean here, um, a lot of the Dutch speakers here, they also speak English, especially the younger generation, but I suspect they're still more comfortable speaking in Dutch and when they're more relaxed with their Dutch friends they just default into Dutch. Um, but the minute you speak English to them, they can, they'll, they'll speak English back to you. Not perfectly, mind you, not always perfectly, but well enough. Okay, the height is equal to the length. Le hauteur est égal à la longueur. Longueur. Comment vas-tu, mon petit chien? Are you... <laughs> why are they... Oh, why are they putting these sentences in? They don't add much in terms of like helping you learn vocabulary. They're just wow. They mean true as in darling. I couldn't think of darling, so I put cabbage on purpose. So why uh, I oh. You know what happens is sometimes people get added as a contributor to Duolingo and they get really excited and then they add extra stuff. <sighs> Dis-moi, es-tu amoureux? Are you in love? The village is relatively small but its territory is significant. 
with a large uh, relatively petit mais son territoire est important. Les grands esprits se rencontrent. Okay, so they wanted great minds think alike. I can't wonder if people are mad at this. <laughs> Okay, I actually want to see that. Um, that actually is true. Look there. Okay, yeah. I guess it is there. Yeah, I do agree with that. They should really take the literal translation. We know it's an idiom. And this person, apparently, I guess, maybe... Maybe the person actually speaks French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, I can, that I can see that movie is important. Que je puisse voir ce film est important. Elle aime particulièrement les légumes. She, oops, she, we can say especially, likes vegetables. And they did tell us that particulièrement can be translated as especially. When in doubt, I translate things literally sometimes with things like this because I'm never sure if they're going to put in what we would naturally say in English. It depends on who's contributing to the courses. You can explain the formula. Vous pouvez expliquer la formule. Tu es une personne sympathique. Uh, you're a nice person is what I would translate that as. These files are not on the hard drive. Ces fichiers ne sont pas sur le disque dur. Il semble qu'elle ne puisse venir. It appears that she can't come. Il semble qu'elle ne puisse venir. That's what it, that's how I'm translating it as, and I'm pretty sure that's what it means. I'm not quite sure if they put something else as the accepted answer. Yeah, it seems that she's not able to. <laughs> you don't really say it that way in English. Oh my God. <laughs> 84 discussions, <laughs> 84 comments on this because, oh, wow. You know, I haven't done the French for English speakers course in a long time. And actually, like I said, it was one of the first courses I finished on Duolingo like five years ago. So I only come back to it once in a while. <laughs> I don't know why there's 84 comments. That's hilarious. Next. Uh, 100 personnes. Elle emploie environ 100 personnes. Comment vas-tu, mon petit chou? How are you? My darling. Oh, yeah, mon petit chou. I mean, I mean maybe it just sounds cuter in French to say mon petit chou to your, uh, to your sweetheart, I guess. But I, I don't know, I don't like it when people call me darling, you know, and then if you start calling me, you start calling me affection, trying to call me something, trying to be affectionate with me by calling me something like 
cabbage or some other kind of food <laughs> it's probably going to get you smacked uh, <laughs> might get you smacked depending on the <laughs> uh, my boyfriend and I actually don't really call each other um, we don't have pet names for each other actually not really nah how are you my darling <laughs> We don't come home and say, hi, honey bunch. <laughs> um, uh, we like to think that we, we're, we have a mature relationship, but at the same time, we're both very young at heart. We're, we're both kind of like little kids. Like We love to play our games. <laughs> the soil can freeze below five degrees. Le sol peut geler à... No. En dessous de cinq degrés. Les graines sont petites. The seeds are small. La France est une vieille nation. Uh, La France est une vieille nation. La France est une vieille nation. I'm trying to remember how to spell this. Vieille nation. Because it's normally. Yeah. I think that's the way you spell it. La France est une vieille nation. Yep, and it's feminine. Almost forgot. Yes, France is an old nation. De plus, il est plus facile à réaliser. Furthermore. It's easier to accomplish is what they gave me earlier. Tire la porte. Tire la porte. Tire la porte. Uh, let's hold the door in English. Tire la porte. Tire la porte. Pull the door. Um, now I'm thinking in Spanish. No, I forget this road. Um, so, um, uh, this road goes entirely uphill. No, I don't think I can translate it into French right now. This road. Um, so look for road in French. You know, if I see it, I know it. I'm just not gonna get it right. No, I think I'm going to have to pass on this one. I can't do it. Um, this road goes entirely uphill. So, uh, why am I forgetting the French word for road? I guess oh, it's been a while. Um, so, I'm thinking Spanish Camino and then and now I'm thinking that's that um you know how do I say street in in, in French again um I'm gonna just pass this one. Yeah, sets it out. I was wondering if it might be out. Is entirely uphill. I would translate that as this route is entirely uphill. This road is entirely uphill, not goes entirely uphill. Whoever put this in is just I don't know. Cette route est entièrement en côte. Yeah, is entirely uphill, and as you can see, people are discussing that because it doesn't translate well. I mean, you could say goes entirely uphill, but 
ya so people are pretty annoyed at this stuff okay I will th I think I will just not do this one and I will go back and just do individual skills and okay athletes try this one and then I will I think take a break after this faire de l'escalade c'est monter en utilisant les pieds et les mains um, that means rock climbing tous les jours il se levait très tôt pour courir tous les jours every day he gets up very early to run Oh, past tense. Oops, sorry. I thought it says to love. Maybe I need to slow down. Or maybe I just need a break. Come back to this later. Pour jouer au tennis, il faut une raquette. It's a racket. Tous les jours, il se levait très tôt pour courir. Yeah, he used. La Grèce est un pays au bord de la Méditerranée, à l'est de l'Italie. <laughs> Elle participait aux courses les plus connues. Um, they part... um, they participated in... Konu means known. Um, they participated in the most well-known courses, is what I would say. They... Oh, they want used to attend the most famous races. Oh yeah, it's races. Okay, fine. Compete? Really? Oh, yeah, it would be comfy. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to do one, one or two skills, try to finish this. Faire de l'escalade, c'est monter en utilisant les pieds et les mains. This means rock climbing. Elle se levait très tôt pour s'entraîner. Okay, yeah, we're, she's giving me the past tense stuff. What skill is this? Athletes. Okay. She used to get up very early to train. Pour jouer au tennis, il faut une raquette. It's a racket. Il s'entraînait, donc il s'améliorait. Um. Uh. used to train so they improve at what they used to train so they yeah so they improved c'était le moins bon joueur c'était le pire that means the worst elle participait aux courses les plus connues participate of course le plus connu um so they want this is what they want they want they used to compete in the most famous races so instruments is not here instrument take is a prong headed on envelope is not there so you, they used to compete in the most famous races is what they want L'année où j'ai gagné cette compétition, c'était une année importante pour moi. The year where... 
Oh. <laughs> Wait, why? E. Why would they say Nane? Yeah, the year when. It is the e. year when. I feel like some of the French here is like they're purposely trying to mislead you with some things. It just. I don't like those kinds of things in any of my kind of language learning. Well, any learning, I don't like those kinds of things because it's not really. Feels like it's not really testing what you know. They're just trying to be tricky. C'était le moins bon joueur. C'était le pire. Je jouais toujours avec les meilleures raquettes. I used to always play with the best rackets. I used to always play with the Rackets. Avant, ce joueur de tennis gagnait tous ses matchs, maintenant il perd tout le temps. Before, this translates as before temps. this this tennis player used to win all the matches, now he loses all the time. Il s'entraînait, donc il s'améliorait. And I really don't like the Duolingo audio still. You don't say il s'entraînait. You don't say this T. S'entraîne. S'entraînait. Il s'entraînait, donc il s'améliorait. You don't say that T at all. I, I want to hear, I want to hear. This is why I didn't like the French Duolingo course, because the pronunciation is horrible. Il s'entraînait, donc il s'améliorait. Yeah, see, the Google one sounds a lot better. Um. They used to train, so they improved. Um, okay, they're not playing this. I know it means this, actually. Uh, wow. Okay, I'll read this to you. L'équipe de France joue contre l'équipe d'Angleterre. L'équipe d'Angleterre va sûrement gagner. Okay, this translates as the French team plays against the English team. Right? I mean, I guess you can say the team from France or the team from England. Okay, if you really want to be literal, okay, I'll say it that way. Um, the team from France plays against the team from England. The team from England is surely going to win. So contre means against. Nous nous levions tôt pour aller surfer. Nous nous levions tôt pour aller surfer. Um, we get up early. We get up early to go surfing. I think they do mean literally surfing. Oh, it is a past tense. We used to get up early to go surfing. Nous sommes allés au stade et nous avons assisté à un très beau match. Nous sommes allés au stade et nous avons assisté à un très beau match. Um, what does nous avons assisté mean? Um, nous avons aidé. What? What? Nous sommes allés, we went to the stadium and we what <laughs> no. oh because I mean attended Assiste. assisté I am actually not familiar assisté. with that definition of assisté in French I'm just going to look this up Yeah, it does mean to assist, but it also means to sit in. That is a weird meaning for French, to stay. Oh, I don't want that one. I want Wiktionary. Well, I guess you do learn some new things.
normally yeah okay um ah that's why assiste ah nous avons assisté à so they should actually say what does nous avons assisté à mean <sighs> because nous avons assisté would mean to assist uh, we assisted it's just when you it's just when you have the a ah after then it means to attend to be present or to witness to observe okay yeah They're tr it's like I said, they're either trying to be tricky or they just purposely left out ah because they didn't want to think about it. Like, c'était le moins bon joueur, c'était le pire. Je jouais toujours avec les meilleures raquettes. Je jouais toujours avec les meilleures raquettes. Pour jouer au tennis, il faut une raquette. To play tennis, uh, you need a racket. Nous nous levions tôt pour aller surfer. We, we learned this one. We used to get up early to go surf, surfing. We used to get up early to go surfing. Faire de l'escalade, c'est monter en utilisant les pieds et les mains. Elle participait aux courses les plus connues. They used to um, uh, com compete in the most famous races. L'année où j'ai gagné cette compétition, c'était une année importante. Tous les jours, il se levait très tôt pour courir. Every day, he used to get up very early to run. Il doit s'entraîner pour devenir un grand champion. Um, yeah, c'est pour préparer. Il s'entraînait, donc il s'améliorait. Oh. <laughs> they used to train, so they improved. So, um, if you want to hear actually better French, you can try the Teach Yourself French um, books and audio. <laughs> um, or actually, you know, listen to some French music. Um, but keep in mind that when they sing in French, you know, the mute E in French, they'll, they'll pronounce it when they're singing sometimes to like maintain, because um, it'll sound better rhythmically with the song. Um, you can listen to French music. Avant, or, ce joueur de tennis gagnait tous ses matchs. Maintenant, il perd tout le temps. Or just watch some French movies. <laughs> Avant, ce joueur de tennis gagnait tous ses matchs. Maintenant, il perd tout le temps. Yes. Before this tennis player used to win all the matches, but now he loses all the time. Avant, nous ne gagnions jamais aucune course. Avant, nous ne gagnions jamais aucune course. Okay. La Grèce est un pays au bord de la Méditerranée, à l'est de l'Italie. East of Italy. Uh, Greece is a country. Um, Greece is a country on the border of the Mediterranean, east of Italy. Il était très sérieux, alors il s'améliorait vite. Il était très sérieux, alors il s'améliorait vite. Il est... Ok. He's not highlighting it, telling me I got it wrong, right, I don't know. L'équipe de France joue... Oh, yeah, we saw this one earlier. The French team plays against the English team. The English team is surely going to win. Um, contre means against. Next one. Ce joueur est jeune, il s'améliorera rapidement. Ce joueur est jeune, il s'améliorera rapidement. En 1960, j'étais jeune et, à cette époque, je faisais beaucoup de sport. J'étais jeune et, à cette époque, je faisais beaucoup de sport. À uh, time, à cette époque, um, yeah, it means at that time. <laughs> um, um, you can also, I think epoch also means era. Um, age, era, 
And yeah, we do use epoch in English, like coming from French. Je participais, mais je ne gagnais jamais. Okay. Je participais, mais je ne gagnais jamais. Next. Nous sommes allés au stade et nous avons assisté à un très beau match. Okay, they said this is to watch because they're saying what does nous avons assisté mean, which would mean we assisted, if you translate that. But we helped or we assisted, but they actually want us to say nous avons vous because assisté, nous. Because it's nous avons assisté, assisté à. à, which will give you we attended. So they really should have put the a there to help you to actually be more accurate because this is not accurate. Nous avons assisté means we we helped. So, but I think they did that. They might have did that intentionally. Uh, I don't know if you can report anything on that. Um, yeah, you can't really report anything on that. Next one. Ils s'entraînaient tous les jeudis et samedis. Ils s'entraînaient tous les jeudis et samedis. And that one's done. Yay. Raise your hand. I don't know what's now. I mean, I, yeah. Anyway, so that's a little bit of uh, French for the English speakers course. I'm not really happy with the additions. I don't think it adds very much. Um, once, I, I think that once you learn a little bit of a language, a certain amount of a language, you can probably go out and try to find um, some material to read, listen to, or watch. Um, you don't have to beat yourself over the head on the Duolingo courses necessarily. Now, for Dutch, I did, man I did go and do the Dutch all the way through uh, getting all the skills all the way to level 5 and happen to get a maximum level 25 with XP's on that. But the reason I did that for Dutch is that it's actually really hard to find interesting stuff in the Dutch language. Um, it's hard, it was hard for, it's hard for me to find books. It's hard for me to find um, interesting music in the Dutch language. And, uh, and uh, there's actually a lot of great Dutch music artists out there and great Dutch G uh, DJs. Martin Garrix is Dutch. Um, Armin van Buren is Dutch. Um, and a few others, those are great DJs. Uh, one of my favorite bands within within Temptation is Dutch, but um, they all do their music in English. <laughs> they don't do it in the Dutch language. Um, so it's hard to find really good music that is in the Dutch language. Um, now that I'm in the Netherlands, I can watch some Dutch shows, which is good, but I've really only found w um, one series that I really like. It's uh, De Twelfth van Oldenheim and De Twelfth van Schouwendam are two really good series. Uh, they're, they're really uh, thrillers, uh, mystery, thriller, drama, um, but a lot of the Dutch shows are all ma mainly drama. So, you know, don't feel like you have to beat your head on Duolingo and try and get all your skills up to level five or try to get max out your XP to 25, unless you really want to. I'm just saying, but if you're really trying to learn a language, sometimes the most important thing is to get out there and talk to the people who talk to people who speak that language that you're trying to learn. I think that's the most important thing. And and like I said too, um, you know, being immersed in that language and in the culture of that language also helps. So you know, I had to I have to learn Dutch because I'm in the I live in the Netherlands. And like I said, the reason I maxed out my Dutch tree and Duolingo is simply because I needed the extra materials. I have um, Teach Yourself Dutch. There was also Dutch on Mango Languages and Monday Languages. I've done all of those. I also, for Dutch, I also did um, Ufen and Puntenel, which I only found when I moved to the Netherlands, which is a Dutch website. And you can see um, if you want to learn the language courses, you click on Tal, which means language and they'll teach you there's a bunch of dutch courses on here you pro you probably can sign in if you live in a different country if you want to learn more dutch you can do that so i've done all of these courses actually i'm not logged in right now so you can't see that um but you know um like i said i'm not really like super intent on maxing out all of the skills on every language tree I've the when I say I've completed a course, 
well, not a course, when I've completed a course on Duolingo, I mean that I, comp I finished the tree to level one. Now this is because um, five years ago when I started on Duolingo, there was no levels for skill on the skills. There was just the tree and you do it once and you can do like the repetition. You could do the strengthening on the tree or not. Um, and I guess for some reason, you know, like I said, for whatever reason, Duolingo wanted to add in the extra levels per skill for each of the skills. Um, probably, you know, I guess, I guess, like I said, it, it worked out fine for me with the Dutch, but for some of the, of the other languages, I don't feel the need to, especially if I'm not trying to speak, uh, trying to learn to speak it on a daily basis. I'm not really that interested in maxing out all my skills all the language skill trees. I might eventually try and max out the Spanish and Russian, but I think, like I said in my previous stream, I like to uh, learn from, uh, learn in a different way, like just take the stuff I know and learn it in a different way, like switch the context around. So I'll go to the Spanish speaker's side or the, once I get better at Russian, I will probably go over to the Russian speaker's side. And uh, as we can see, we've got German, French, Spanish, and Swedish. Oh, almost Swedish. It's 85% done for Russian speakers. Um, and like I said, I was on the Spanish side. I've done a little bit of Guarani and Catalan. I, I finished the Catalan again to level one, but I finished the tree is what I mean. Um, and I'm working on this one. I've done French for Spanish speakers and a, a Italian for Spanish speakers actually. But I'm working on the Russian and the Portuguese and Guarani and maybe German li again later. I don't know. Not that keen on doing German right now. I finished the German for English speakers course. So um, depends on. Uh, so make your decision based on what you're interested in learning and what your goals are, what your needs are actually. And your needs often supersede everything. Um, and anyways, I'm gonna actually switch this back to my. Uh, Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyways, so that is my Duolingo lessons and my, I guess I did a little test out on the French there. For today, um, I will probably eventually just get around to doing all those, those remaining skills that I need for my French Duolingo Golden Owl again. I'll probably do it on my app or something. Um, Okay, so I think that was it for today, and I will see you next time. And fana, fana dach.